What's up guys? We are back today with my series where we look at the best fighters in the world. I give you five things that make these fighters exceptional and then I give you training tips so you can be a little bit more like them. And today we are focusing on the very unorthodox, the very interesting Cedric Dumbe. This guy moves so odd, he pulls off amazing knockouts. It's probably the reason that so many people have requested me to cover him. So stick around guys, intro first and then straight into the episode. All right guys, Cedric Dumbay. To be honest, I have not watched many of his fights before I started prepping up for this video. It didn't take me long, I think three or four fights. I watched three or four and right away I was like, okay, here's something, here's something, here's something. It's very easy to watch his fights and pick up on the things he does differently and the things that make him so successful. Now first, I wanna let it be said that when somebody moves a little different, when they have their own unique style, Often, it's not something that's gonna work for everybody. So when I provide you with these five tips, remember, maybe number one, number two, number three have no relevance to you whatsoever, but maybe number four. Maybe that's the one where you go, ooh, I can start implementing that into my game. So be sure to check out all five points. They probably all won't help you, but maybe one will. And before we jump into point number one, guys, if you have not already, give the video a like, of course, get subscribed, and let's move on. Now, guys, point number one, one of the very first things I noticed as soon as I started watching his fight against Nikki Holtzkin, I was watching the rematch, and I went, wow, this guy is so good at mixing up his intensity. And what I mean by that is his striking intensity. He doesn't just bomb shots in, but he also doesn't just touch. He does a very nice mixture of both. And of course, the light mixture, the mixture where he's just touching, he's touching. It keeps people always at bay, but also maybe sort of lulls them into a false sense of security. You're going, oh, this guy doesn't hurt. He's just touching away. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he's just touching away and it's just, up. and he has some serious power. So for him to be able to mix intensity is just such an amazing asset to his whole game. He's able to not tire out because he's very rarely putting everything into his shots. It's much easier to catch people. They get complacent when you're touching them. And the power shots, when you throw them, they're not gonna be as expected. If every time I step in, I and the guy knows I'm bombing for knockouts, he's gonna be that much more ready. He's gonna be that much more focused. But when you're constantly touching and people have that sort of mentality that, oh, maybe he's not actually gonna be able to hurt me in this next exchange, I might as well go hard. You might leave more openings. The opponent might get a little bit sloppy trying to counter and then he can let those shots just fly. Now, in terms of training this, let's talk about shadow boxing. Let's say I'm shadow boxing. And this is what I would like you guys to try and do if you wanna get good at mixing intensity. And this is something that's very, very practical to learn if you're an MMA fighter. You don't always wanna be going super, super hard. So I can be touching. Just work, you know, light. Somebody like Lomachenko is very good. He'll go light and then hit hard a couple times and then right back to light. Couple hard and just try, don't stop punching because this is my break time. I'm just in the break here. And you can mix in the kicks and stuff. I'm just not going to because I'm not stretched out yet. But I'm just touching away, pitter patter and then bump, bump, bump. And then back to pitter patter. One shot, touching, touching maybe two shots, and try to play around with the up-down pace, but without taking those big breaks. It's very easy to change rhythm when you take big breaks in between. You know, I go, okay, I'm light. Okay, let's pause. Now I'm gonna go hard. That's too easy. We wanna be able to flow from one to the other seamlessly. So you can do it in shadow boxing, you can do it in bag work. Bag work is gonna be much harder, in my opinion. I think it's more difficult to get going up and down on the bag in terms of pace with that non-stop touch, 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 bang, touch, touch, touch. And you wanna be able to switch the rhythm a little bit harder. So start off with shadow boxing. Get very comfortable with the idea of up and then down up and down, and we're just talking in terms of power. We're not talking in terms of speed. We're still throwing the punches at the same pace. I can even go quick. I can just let my hands go a little faster, and then every once in a while, I just rip a couple shots in, and then right back to pitter patter. Mixing intensity, guys like Lomachenko just make a masterpiece of it. Cedric Dumbe is doing such a good job with it, and it's of course one of the reasons that he is able to be so effective as a glory champion. All right guys, moving on. Next, I wanna talk about Cedric Dumbe's movement. He's not very stationary, and one of the reasons that this is so unique is it's very, very common in glory kickboxing, in kickboxing, to just, you know, my opponent's here, and I stand here. 
and that's it. And somebody throws at me, and I just guard up, and then I try to get my counter in. But Doombay is always on the move. It's very rare for him to just settle down and completely just stand here and let his opponent do whatever they want. He's always moving. He's always on the go. It makes it much harder to catch him, much harder to land a hard shot on him, which is something you don't see happen to him very often. He's smart. He engages sometimes, but on his own terms. When somebody else is coming early in the fight when he's feeling them out that movement is so incredibly important now movement is more of a priority in mma i actually think cedric dumbay would be a spectacular mma fighter in terms of striking so many aspects of what he does is perfect for mma it's actually surprising he's made it to a glory world champion because many people who try to utilize the style he's utilizing would not be successful but obviously he's got his style down perfectly so his movement is just incredible it's something that you guys can work once again and it's just being cognitive of what you're doing instead of you know going oh, okay I'm gonna plant I'm gonna plant I'm just gonna hit and I'll take a little step away you need to actually engage your mind in shadow boxing like there's an actual opponent there you have to imagine I move in I hit him and now he's hunting me okay I'm gonna move away he's hunting me I counter shot and then I move and I have to actually actively be imagining that opponent. Otherwise, all the movement just kind of seems like a waste when you're doing it. The more advanced guys will understand when you shadow box, it's not just me throwing techniques, it's actually imagining somebody throwing back at me, actually finding like, okay, the guy blocked the shot and now I'm gonna hit him to the body and then the body again. Oh, now his hands are down, now I'm gonna come up top and you're actively thinking on that as you're shadow boxing. But if you're still focusing on your technique and your defense, that's too much to ask. You can't be thinking about everything. Shadow boxing at this level more comes when everything in here is muscle memory. You could just do it almost with your eyes closed in your sleep. And then from there, you can start imagining somebody else on the opposite side. So if you're gonna try and utilize movement in shadow boxing, in bag work, really try to imagine an opponent chasing you down, what they're throwing and the angles that you'll be taking. And remember, just because so many other people, pretty much everybody else, 99% of kickboxers stand here. I'm one of them. I just stand right here a lot of the time and I just end up in this firefight exchange. But there's no rule against stepping back and angling off and taking movements every time this guy approaches. Cedric Dumbay does it so well. I'm very impressed by his movement and like I said I think he would do very very well in MMA if it was just stand-up. I don't know what his ground game is like. All right guys next I want to talk about Cedric Dumbay's counter punches and his head movement. He ties them in together and I think it's one of the reasons that he's able to knock people out so well because blocking a shot and then countering. That's good, but it's slow or relatively slow. Slow in terms of I have to block, there's like one beat, block, hit. But when I slip and hit or I move my head and hit, it's almost more like this. It's like they were going to hit and then I land as opposed to one, two. Now again, he's utilizing something outside the traditional kickboxing. Very often when you see kickboxers strike, it's small head movement or no head movement. The head, move, the head is stationary as we punch. That's where you're generally gonna hit the hardest, that's where you're most balanced. But when you watch his fights, what he often does, he'll just, he'll stay at this range, he'll be touching, then he'll take a step back. He'll wait for them to engage. As soon as they engage, as soon as they throw a punch, he drops his head and he slams in a counter shot. And so many elements of what he does are not technically precise. A lot of times when he slips and he throws, his other hand's way down here. But it doesn't matter because his head's so far off the center line, he knows if something comes this way, he's slipping to the other side and he's coming with a second shot. To drill this, it's best to do with a partner. You have somebody throw directly at your head, maybe they throw a cross, as they throw the cross, you drop to the side. Or as they throw the jab, you do the corkscrew, you drop to the side. Or maybe they throw a jab here. You slip and you throw the hook. These are all techniques you can work right now. Like literally right where you're standing. You can just get in your stance and just work dropping your head and moving, but the timing and being able to pull it off when somebody punches in that split second, you wanna start on your own and then you start drilling with a partner. That's when you're really gonna be able to pull it off in sparring or a fight. Now, as I already mentioned, Cedric, when he throws, he doesn't really worry about what the other hand is doing, but unless you're an exceptional fighter, you're just next level, your skill level is super high, I would really suggest as you slip, keeping this hand there, just in case the second shot comes and you're not fast enough like him to either get our head out of the way or to slip and throw another shot. Basically what he's doing with this whole thing is as soon as somebody throws a shot, they open themselves up in some way. So he's just always waiting and exploiting that instead of 
always being on the offensive. I have to be the offensive one. He goes, okay, I'll be defensive. I'll find that opening because when they throw, they're going to give me something. Something to hit is going to be created. And then if people start deciding, oh, you know, every time I throw, I get countered, then they're going to start easing off. And then he can just go back in to his pitter patter pace, scoring points like we already talked about. All right, guys, moving on. Now I want to talk about the mixture of his defense. And as I've been saying, so many things he's doing are different. Many, many, almost all kickboxers hold their hands here. That's their defense. But there are other fighters who will utilize hands down. They'll be out here. They very rarely put their hands up, but he does both. And because he can do both, it's very difficult to figure out what to do against him offensively to be effective. If the opponent gets too offensive and he's going, ah, I don't want to engage in this, then he'll use his footwork. He'll use that. If that doesn't work, then he'll start utilizing some slipping. He's pretty darn good at slipping. He'll let his hands go down. But then at any point, if he gets tagged or he just probably feels like for a second, oh, okay, I'm overwhelmed, he'll just settle down against the ropes and he'll just stand here. He doesn't do anything fancy. It's not like he's riding the punches. He just literally stands and just creates a shell. He'll take a couple shots and then he'll, he'll catch his angle again. Now I want you guys to imagine, I've talked about this a lot. If you come from a gym that only teaches you one style and you never try the other style or the other way or the multitude of ways to deal with punches, you're gonna get stuck in this idea. I can only deal with punches one way. I'm only this fighter. And there's no reason that you have to just fight here or you have to just slip. Being able to combine defensive or offensive prowess together is gonna to make you the most effective fighter. And Cedric demonstrates it perfectly because he can switch from one to the other rapidly depending on the necessity of the situation and which one's gonna suit him best. And it makes it, as we said already, very difficult for anybody to land shots on him because the mixture of his defense is always so frustrating, always so hard to catch him when you finally think like, okay, he stopped moving, he stopped moving his head, and now he's stuck in a spot and now I'm gonna bang away. Well, then his defense here is just so sharp that you don't land anything anyway. Now, everything we've talked about, guys, moves us into point number five, our last point of today, and that is his aggression when he hurts somebody. If somebody gets a little bit too gung-ho against him, he gets his head off the center line and bang, he counters and he hurts them. If they were being a little too defensive and then he's touching, He's touching, he sees an opening, bang, he hurts them. If at any point he has somebody hurt and he's going, oh, okay, this guy's in trouble. Now he throws away the tactics, the tactics of being defensively sound, the tactics of picking away at somebody, the tactics of finding an opening. And he goes, you're hurt, I'm coming. I'm coming like crazy. And you don't see that that often from the guys who are technically gifted. People like Floyd Mayweather, Giorgio Petrosian, George St. Pierre, any of those guys who are really, like really next level. When they hurt somebody, yes, they go a little bit on the hunt, but they don't go crazy. Cedric Jumbe, it's like he sees blood and he's just going for it. He's going to finish the fight. And I haven't seen too many people do this who have the defensive prowess that he does. Now, I would never endorse anybody to be as aggressive as Cedric is in these moments unless you're thinking. You run out and you're like, oh, I'm gonna come at this guy and I'm gonna knock him out with all my aggression the way Cedric does, but it's just from the opening bell. You're putting yourself at risk of a counter shot, not understanding what this guy is capable of. But Cedric really only does it once he's gathered information on this guy and he has them really hurt and he knows what he needs to do to get the KO. And as he's hunting, he's utilizing what we already talked about. He's coming in and he's always getting his head off that center line so that it's very hard to counter him. He keeps his head safe or protected or at least to the best of his abilities and it makes him a scary fighter when you combine everything together. You combine the fact that he's always moving, he's hard to catch, his defense is all over the place. He mixes up his intensity so he's unpredictable. If you throw a shot at him, he's very likely going to move his head, you're going to miss and he's going to counter you. And then after all that, if he does hurt you, he is coming and he's not letting you off the hook. He is coming with so much aggression aggression that very few other fighters can actually implement without putting themselves at massive, massive risk. Guys like Badr Hari have demonstrated this kind of aggression, but a lot of times it comes back to haunt him and they get the counter shot and they end up losing the fight. This kind of aggression is dangerous, but Cedric somehow seems to make it really work. He doesn't put himself at risk. I haven't seen him put this type of aggression on and end up getting knocked out because of it, which is unbelievable because generally when people do that, there's mistakes that are gonna be made at some point. Anyway, guys, it was fun covering Cedric Dumbay. As I said at the beginning of the episode, I did not watch too many of his fights before this. And honestly, it was just because his style is, is not the prettiest. He has elements, the elements we talked about today, which are exceptional. But when I look at his kicks, his low kicks sometimes, and some of his boxing, I go, oh, it's not the prettiest 
all the time. And I'm a big fan of fighters like Masato, Bokao, Andy Sauer, who are just crisp. Their techniques are amazing all the time. But because of you guys requesting this video, getting to cover Cedric Dumbe was actually very fun. So thanks for that, guys. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you have not already, get subscribed. Join the channel, join the community. We're growing, it's fantastic. Guys, I've said it a hundred times. I'll probably say it a hundred more because it's so important. Train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.